Hey guys, it's Sam again for Ryzen Lab. Now you may be aware that 2024.1 has been out for some time now, but you may not be aware of the differences between 2024.1 and the initial release of 2024. So let's pop on over to the application and take a look. Okay, so here we are in the initial release of 2024, and I wanna to speak to you first about the drop-down button. So in the top bar here, you'll notice that we've got some drop-down buttons here that you can access. And you'll also notice that, if we have a look at the unwrap here, we've got a bunch of uh, buttons that are exposed too. So let's jump over to 2024.1, and we can see the difference. You'll notice that the contents of the bar is a lot shorter now. And you'll notice that we haven't got a drop down button for our packing here, like we did previously. And that's because it's been replaced by this little drop down here, which is present in every panel. And if we have a look at the unwrap, all of the stuff that was exposed before now isn't. So let's have a look at this drop down menu. All of the stuff that was exposed before is now in this menu and can be executed from this menu. So we could just, you know, choose a load of points on an island and click the pin button and it would pin those points. Alternatively, if you do want them exposed, you can drag them out of this menu into the panel. Like so. So now you can choose what is exposed and what isn't. And if you wanna put these back in, you can in fact just drag them over the drop down like this. Okay, so we're back in the initial release of 2024 and now we're gonna be speaking about tool tips. You'll notice that if you hover your cursor over a button and wait, you'll get a tool tip pop up. But if you do this over a grayed out button, no tool tip. Now this is a personal bugbear of mine. And thankfully, if we switch over to 2024.1, now when we hover over grayed out buttons, we get a tool tip. Okay, yet again, we are back in 2024, and I want to talk to you about the attributes buttons. So if I click on the select tool here, in the attributes, you will see a bunch of icons up here that are actually buttons too, and you'll notice that they go off the side of the screen here. And if I drag this out, it exposes more of them. And if I put it back, now we've got a bunch of icons that are actually hidden. Uh, we've remedied this in 2024.1, so I've switched over now, and you can see that these icons are now stacking up. So as I adjust this, they will always be on screen at the same time. Okay, we're back in 2024 again, and I want to speak to you about attribute segments. So I'm going to choose our UV set attributes, and I'm going to lock this, and then I'm going to choose our seams attributes, and I'm also going to lock this, and we'll do the same for our unwrap panel as well. And for good measure, projections. Now, I think you'll agree that it's not very easy to determine which section is where. The only indication we've got really is this arrow. But subsections within sections also have arrows. So, you know, you look over and it's not immediately obvious where the separation occurs between these segments. We've remedied this in 2024.1, so let's pop over and we'll do the same thing. So let's choose our UV set and lock this and choose our seams and lock this. And let's do the same with unwrap and our projections. You can see now that there is a separation between each segment. We put this little gap and round it off the corners and we think that that just helps you to identify the different segments at a glance much more easily. Okay, we're back in 2024 again. Let's talk map resolution. So up here, you can see that we've got a field here that you can click in and type a map resolution. You can also do this in the attributes and if we look over here, we've got a field for map resolution and you can type it in. Let's move on over to 2024.1. And we now have this drop down that shows power of two values for map resolutions. 
These are commonly used and makes it much easier for the user just to select one and away they go. Also pressing the attribute button, you have a field that you can type in specific map resolutions in and the drop down is also present here. All right, we're back in 2024 and I want to talk to you about performance optimizations, specifically operation speed increases. So let me tell you a little bit about this scene. It's pretty obvious. We've got a bunch of spheres here. Now you might think they're gray, but actually if we zoom in, we can just see they're really heavy meshes. And I've done this on purpose to demonstrate the speed increases. So like I said, we're in 2024. I've got a little stopwatch here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the unfold shortcut key U and this will unfold. And because there's no flattened islands presence, it'll also pack these as well. So let's just time this. So I'm going to hit U now and kick off the timer. So I'm pressing U. Let's hit the timer and see how long this takes. And this finished around 22 seconds. So let's now do the same thing in 2024.1. We'll reset the timer. I'm going to click U in the viewport now. Hit that off. Five seconds. So as you can see, that is a massive speed increase. This speed increase doesn't just apply for unfolding, but also for optimization and packing too. So I'm going to demonstrate here by hitting the O key to optimize. So I'm kicking it off now. This is in 2024, by the way. We can see the progress at the bottom there. And compare this to 2024.1. Optimize. Bang. Done. So I think you'll agree a lot faster. OK, we're back in 2024 and I want to talk about faster marquee selection. So here are the spheres from the previous scene. I've just laid them out, I've packed them and I've enlarged the UV view. So with island mode selected, I'm going to drag, select th these islands and let go. You see there was a little bit of a delay there and the same is true for any other selection as well. So I'm in edges now, let go. And there was a little bit of a delay. Let's compare this in 2024.1. So we're in island mode. Let go. Almost instant. And we can do the same thing again in edge mode. Let go. Instantaneous. We've also made massive improvements in transformation too. So let's go back to 2024. And I'm going to go in island mode. And I'm going to select a bunch of islands here. And I'm going to hold the tab key. In fact, I'll use the space key. I'll hold the space key and I'm going to move these around. And this is what it looks like in 2024. I'm going to undo that and deselect. And I'm going to go back to 2024.1. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Select a bunch of islands. And I'm going to move them around by holding space and clicking and moving. I'm sure you'll agree that is much, much quicker. OK, we're back in 2024 and I want to speak to you about the improvements we've made to the mouse keyboard customizer. So if we go up to edit, keyboard mouse, it'll open up our mouse keyboard dialog here. And you can see the layout. We've got the mouse interactions on the left here and the hotkeys on the right. Um, notice that we've got our confirmation buttons at the top and also these columns it's not clear immediately what they are. So let's compare this to 2024.1. Again, we go to edit, keyboard mouse. Now you'll see that the mouse controls and the hotkeys have been separated into two tabs up here at the top so we can switch between them. You'll also notice that the confirmation keys are now at the bottom where you'd expect them to be. And if we go over to the hotkeys, these columns are now named. They have titles at the top. We've also revamped our preferences dialog too. So 
back here in 2024, if I go to Edit, Preferences, you can see that we've got our preferences laid out like this. And you'll notice that to get to the Reset All button, we need to scroll all the way down to the bottom, and now we can see the Reset All button. In 2024.1, we can go to Edit, Preferences Dialog. These sections can now be folded up. So if you don't need access to them, you can fold them up and unfold at will. And you'll notice also that the Reset All button is now sticky and is always present at the bottom of the dialog window. Something else that is new here in 2024.1, in the preferences under default values, you can now set your margin and padding. This was not previously available in 2024. Another new feature that is new to 2024.1 is the ability to change the tile color in preferences. So if we look under viewports here and under tile, we can now uh, make changes to this and it will be applied to the tile. Okay, so we're back in 2024 and I wanna to speak to you about welding behavior. So I'm in edge mode and if I double click this edge here and double click this edge, they belong to each other and I'm going to press the W key, which is the shortcut for weld. And we get this behavior. So these selected edges have been brought together and welded, but we've got this weird deformation going on here. So let's compare this to 2024.1. I'm going to do the same thing. Double click this edge, add this edge to our selection, and then again, hit the W key. This is much more the expected behavior. Okay, we're back in 2024 and we're going to continue with the theme of welding. And again, we're going to be talking about expected behavior. So I'm going to select this edge here. I'm going to double click and you can see where all these edges connect to the adjacent island. And I'm going to press W to weld, but keep an eye on this edge here because this shouldn't move. This island should be brought to your selection and welded. So let's press W and that's exactly what happens. So let's have a look in 2024 and do the same thing again. And again, that's exactly what happens. Now, this is all very well and good for two shapes like this, but let's try on something a little bit different. All right, so I'm back in 2024, and I've got a slightly different setup this time. You can see that I've warped this island slightly. So let's try doing the same thing again. I'm gonna select this edge. You can see that its adjacent pairs are here, and watch this selected edge when I press W to weld you can see that that edge has moved. Let's do that again. Just keep an eye on this section down the bottom here. You can see it's there. I'm gonna press W and it's brought to the adjacent island. This is not correct behavior. So let's have a look at this in 2024.1. Gonna select this edge, press the W key. And this is much more the expected behavior now with the weld tool. Okay, we're back in 2024, and I want to speak to you about an improvement we've made to the distribute space. So I'm going to go up here, make sure we're in island mode. I'm going to go to our transform tools. I'm going to select all these islands, and I'm going to align them all in the top corner. First of all, I better match to selection. Align them all in the top, on top of each other. And now I, I want to distribute these islands using distribute space. So I'm going to choose a pixel value and say, hey, 50 pixels. And then I'm just going to distribute them horizontally. And it has done that, and it has left a 50 pixel gap between them. Great. But what if I want them to be distributed vertically downwards or upwards or even to the left? There isn't an option for this in Ryzen UV 2024. So let's pop on over to 2024.1. OK, so I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm in island mode. I've chosen my transform tool. I'm going to select all these islands and make sure that we've got match to selection on. Uh, align them all in the corner there. And I'm going to distribute these via pixel. And again, I'm going to choose a 50 pixel gap. But this time you'll notice that we've got this anchor tool here. So now I can decide where the anchor is. It's currently set to the middle. So let's distribute horizontally. And it distributes from its central point outwards in both directions. So I'm going to undo that. 
I'm going to now choose the left side of this anchor tool here. So now the anchor is on the left side of this and will distribute horizontally and it will use this side of it as its anchor and distribute this way. We can also do it in the opposite direction. So the anchor is now on the right hand side, distribute horizontally and it's distributed to the left. This applies vertically as well. So with the anchor set to the center, we can distribute vertically and it will do from the center and these anchor settings apply for the vertical directions too. Okay, so we're back in 2024 and we've got a bit of a bizarre looking scene here. And that's because we've got this cylinder that I've unwrapped and I've kind of deformed it. And there's a good reason for doing this. And it's because I want to talk about the histogram bar at the bottom here. So I'm going to switch this over to texel density. And as you can see, I'm in island mode. And we have one little pip on the histogram bar that I can select and everything gets selected. And that's because I'm in island mode. But if I go into, say, edge mode, you can still see that we've got a single pip on here. And if I choose it, it will choose these edges here. And if I choose somewhere else along this bar, we get a different selection. But there's nothing actually on the bar to let us know that we're selecting it. And unbeknownst to you, the user, what's actually happening here is that we're actually choosing polygons, even though we're in edge mode. But again, there's no indication that that's actually happening. So let's flip over to 2024.1. And again, we will switch on over to Texel Density. And we will go into Edge Mode. Now you can see that there are several spikes on the histogram bar informing us of the Texel Density of certain collections of edges. So if I choose this one up here, it's this one. If we choose this one here, it's these and so on and so forth. So that's another improvement we've made. We've made it much, much clearer as to what you're actually selecting. Okay, I'm back in 2024 and I've got one more thing before I go, and that is long press buttons now also trigger action on release. So I'm going to press the optimize key, which is O, just so there's no distortion anymore. And I'm going to go up to pack here and long press, I'm still holding down the button, go down to pack and release. And nothing happens. Let's flip over to 2024.1. I'm gonna do the same thing. Press O to optimize. Go up to my drop down here, pack translate and let go. And it executes the operation. So that's it guys. I just wanted to go over a few things that have uh, improved between 2024 and 2024.1. I hope that was helpful. I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed our video, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for video updates. You can check us out on social media, Discord, and our website, links in the description. And if you're looking for more Ryzen UV content, you can choose one of these videos on screen. That's it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.